was in corporate America for 16 years and I was successful in corporate America. Uh, 12 years, global operation, had the opportunity to see the world. The last four years, I was chief diversity officer for a Fortune 500 company. And I think in that role, Matt, is when I decided that was it. And part of the reason why I felt like that was it was simply because if this is what the top looks and feels like in, in corporate America, in corporate America, I don't want to be a part of it. So you're in the C-suite. I was in the C-suite. Yeah. For those of you tuning in, what's cracking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Zipal. Let me clear through these uh, yeah. landscapers All here. All this dust. Yep. Yeah, she... Drop top problems. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Guys, if you're just tuning in right now, I am your money smart guy, Matt Zipala, host of the Money, money Smart Show. We vlog every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Vlog. We upload on YouTube called Living Money Smart. And speaking of Sunday mornings, this gentleman here, Lanell Harris, Chicago radio show host. That's right. And uh, recently, just a client of our firm, you met with my wife. I've been uh, a client for a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah, no the fourth kidding. product. Man, you know, there's nothing wrong with a lot of savings, you know, and, and taking yeah. money away. And As a matter of fact, I'm sure I put a percentage on this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We've been writing on it. But I'm not mad. I'm getting it back. You get yeah. it back. You get it back. I get it back. Yeah. So uh, I ran to Lanal, actually, uh, as I was coming into the office, he was just leaving. And he rolled up. He was rolling. He was rolling up on me. I'm like, whoa, 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 what's up? with that? I'm just kidding. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled up on me, man, and uh, just coming from a visit with my wife. I think you just did a 401k rollover with her. Yep. To uh, index annuities. To index, index yep. annuities. Very yep. good. Very cool. And uh, we. I mean, I've got the pleasure of coaching and mentoring his mother. That's and, right. And uh, uh, Mildred. That's right. So, so Mildred, if you're watching this, it's an honor, pleasure, to be working together and with she you. She made the intro. And she made the intro to you. That's right. Yeah. Dude, I love she it, made man. The intro. Yeah. And, and now, uh, I would say, we have to make sure these live streams, we, we plan this out because Lanal and I, we're like, you know, when you, uh, birds are like feather flock together, we can have a two hour con conversation feel like 30 <laughs> No doubt, minutes, no you know? doubt. So, uh, we both got work to do. Yeah, absolutely, bro. So, as we, as we get into it, Lanal, tell us, tell everybody here in the live stream uh, about your radio show every Sunday morning. Yep, every Sunday morning, WBON 1690 AM. The show is Inspirational Perspective. I'm the host, and what we talk about is how to take your life to the next level. Um, really, how to continually improve yourself. Uh, that's what it, what it's really about in every facet of life. So not just health and well-being, not just work, but also money. That's right. And your relationships as well. So be sure to tune in every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. I'll be there. So you know we were having a conversation because he's, you know, you're walking in a parking lot. You're holding your new IRA, your new individual retirement account. Your, that's right. Your, your rollover. That's right. That my wife helped you establish. You know, you're, you know, you know, both, both. You know, he and his wife Pam are very successful uh, entrepreneurs. You know, she's got a speak. It's like a speakers bureau, right? She owns a speakers bureau. She owns yep. a speakers bureau. Both of them are entrepreneurs. Growing up in the neighborhoods we grew up in, you know, we always thought that rich people were either uh, drug dealers, were athletes, or worse off, when we ran across another rich person, we thought they were jerks. Most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. Right. Yep. They, you know, they treated you, uh, you know, less than your respect level you know command condescending Con yeah look looking at you like this uh, oh, i'm driving a mercedes van while you uh, well i still on the bus stop <laughs> i used to be on the bus stop watching these cars go by speaking of bus stop there's a bus stop right there <laughs> right there yeah right Let, let's talk about that what, what's some of the big misunderstandings you were just having lunch and what did you see over lunch on the news so what i saw on the news csnbc basically what they're saying is in terms of, of employment Black employment in particular, they were looking at employment by race. And when they showed black employment, what you saw is like this growth, maybe what, 2016, 2017, and now 2018, yep. it's on the downturn. And so black employment is down. What I, I was telling Matt about it, and I said, the problem is, they'll tell us the problem all day, but they don't give any solution. Yeah, so if you're a person, right. a black person watching that, you kinda, you're left with a pit in your stomach in terms of what do I do next? Yep. Like, wh what's next? What's the answer, Matt? You're the money guy. Listen, Matt. For us, for, for both me and you, there was no college degree between the two of us. Yeah. Right? I got uh, an associates. Ooh, you got an associate? <laughs> <laughs> you got two. <laughs> you figured out like, nah, I ain't gonna do another two. <laughs> right. right? The answer has been for us entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. It Ownership. has been capitalism. Yeah. So, I mean, let's talk about that because uh, my mentor, um, Patrick McDavid, talks about Democrats, Republic, Republicans, Independent. And historically speaking, 
the the black vote has been democratic. Black True. vote has been leaning True. towards that way. True. And you, yep. you you ask you ask why why do you vote democratic? Was because everybody in my family votes democratic. Yep. But for for us, not to say that we're leaning one party or in another, but Donald Trump just made so many different laws for this year from a tax perspective that you make a ton of money and not get taxed on it as much as you got taxed on it last year. That, those were the, That's one of those times when you're kind of like, oh. <laughs> really? Okay. You did? Right, yeah. <laughs> there's, like, there's, like a, there's like a gift for that, right? Yeah. It happened back with, in the George Bush era, too, yep. when he passed some tax laws, and I was like, oh, okay. That's it? Yeah. So, so you're talking to a bunch of guys that have been living in a six-figure, seven-figure world for, for some time now, but talk about your journey real quick about yeah. leaving corporate America and doing your own thing because you decided, I, I want to create a solution and that's working for me. I was in corporate America. I was in corporate America for 16 years and I was successful in corporate America. Uh, 12 years, global operation, had the opportunity to see the world. The last four years, I was a chief diversity officer for a Fortune 500 company. And I think in that role, Matt, is when I decided that was it. And part of the reason why I felt like that was it was simply because if this is what the top looks and feels like in, in corporate America, in corporate America, I don't want to be a part of it. So you're in the C-suite. I was in the C-suite, yeah. And I don't want to be a part of it. And part of the reason I didn't want to be a part of it was one, the stress on me, the stress on other people of color I saw all around me, the stress on women, right? To to constantly assimilate to that way of being. And and I was just I was tired, man. I was exhausted. And not only was I exhausted, but I also saw that my income level was capped. Now, I was making good money, yeah. but I, I saw that I was going, working about 50, 60 hours a week, and my income level was capped. I knew what I would make, I knew what my bonus would be, yeah. and here's the thing, when I was running global operations, I had a budget of over $200 million. And so if a company would trust me with $200 million, Whoa. that means I must be, I must be worth something. He, he, I trusting must be, you with close to a quarter million dollars. 200 million, brother. <laughs> quarter billion. Quarter billion. Quarter billion. Wow. Yeah. From that perspective, I'm like, man, okay, if they trust me with that type of a budget yep. to run their global operations, what could I do for me? Bingo. What's, yeah, what's, what's, what's right. my self-worth? What's my self-worth right. and right. what can I do for me? Okay. And I, that's when wow. I created the dream in my mind to say, you know what? By the age of 45, I want to be able to write my ticket. I want to be able to do what I want to do. I want to be able to be in a, in a drop-top bins with my buddy on a Friday <laughs> afternoon while everybody else is working. You know, educating other people <laughs> and sharing my purpose on the planet. Ain't that crazy? Hey, by the way, you guys are tuning in right now. I'm, I'm Matt Sapala, Money Smart Guy, and this is Linnell Harris, Chicago radio show host. We're just talking about money, entrepreneurship, and that rich people aren't all jerks. I mean, we're making some good coin. We're, hey, I don't think we're jerks. You're a nice guy. Nice guy. I mean, you're cool, you're right? You help people. Definitely, man, and it's an honor to be helping you. You know, when, when we're thinking about uh, getting wealthy, some sometimes people say, man, 100 grand a year, making seven figures, six figures, seven figures, having more than... 500 bucks in my bank account and that's a lot of the process of the misunderstandings with financial literacy misunderstandings of financial education what were some of the misunderstandings that you had growing up with money you know i i, I thought that you had to work super hard like super super hard to make money yeah. so this whole idea of passive income uh -huh. like that's something no one talked about passive income huh? passive income right we, we, we only know active income passive <laughs> income right you worked an hour you yeah. get paid for the hour that's right right I didn't know anything about passive income. And so as I began to learn about passive income, I'm like, wait a second. If I begin to create products and, and create things that that sell while I'm sleeping, yeah. that's the path to wealth. That's it. And, and so that's one of the things that I began concentrating on as I got older. But when I was when I was young, I had no idea. Nobody said, hey man, if you can create passive income, you'll be wealthy. And I used to, here's the here's funny thing. Back years ago, actually in this area where we're in right now. Yeah. By the way, where are we, bro? Uh, this is what? This is Oak Brook, man. Oak Brook. Okay, Oak Brook, Downers Grove. I mean, they're all kind of close by. It's beautiful here, Yeah, man. but you can I mean, look at this. Yeah, yeah. But I used to detail cars out here, <laughs> okay? And I would see these guys drive in with beautiful cars like yours and, and mine. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> and I used to always wonder, like, how did they afford that? Yeah. How did they get that? And there's this gap between many of us who want more have a desire for more and we don't know how to get it yep. we have no clue 
how to close that gap. And I think that's one of the reasons why we say, well, I'm a nice guy, I'm poor, he's rich, and I don't understand how he got it. So he, he's got to have done something wrong. Yeah. He must be a jerk. Yeah. Must be a jerk. Or he's doing something illegal. Or doing something illegal. Yeah. Must be a jerk. So now that, you know, an entrepreneurship is not widely talked about. You know, people think that capitalism is a bad thing. This mm -hmm. thing about free enterprise, you know, you get to, I mean, people elected in New York a socialist, young socialist, right? And so it's, it's like screaming, we hate capitalism and socialism is the answer. But to us, what has been the answer? It's been capitalism. Capitalism. It's been yeah. entrepreneurship. The ability to build and grow. And not be yeah. dependent upon a government. Not, I mean, are you still waiting for your government handout? No, sir. I forget no, sir. that. As but, a matter of fact, yeah. The product that my wife and I recently purchased from from you, you all at PHP yep. was a product that we we bought because we don't believe that Social Security will be there yeah. when we retire, <laughs> right? Right. So instead, let's go ahead and, and grab an index annuity right. that will pay us out over six figures when I turn fifty nine or sixty years old, if that's when I choose to it's take it. A long it. time from now, right? Right. Long <laughs> time from now. That way if social security's not there, we're golden. Hey, my son's going to college. Oh yeah. babe, you wanna go travel? Lifestyle doesn't change. It's because you took personal ownership of your finances. That's right. You weren't waiting around. Yeah. Your yeah. mother introduced us. You had a conversation with my wife. My wife showed you your options. Mm -hmm. And you said something to in the parking lot. You said, Babe, if our businesses all go to crap, if they all go to shit, that's right. right? That's right. What hap what happens to your, your your savings and investments with what you put my wife? We still get paid. We still get paid, <laughs> right? Because we still get paid. Because you're expanding your financial literacy. And That's you, right. You've been well to do. It. I mean, and you've been incorporating a C-suite. Have you yeah. ever had this conversation about money? No. Really? No. No, no one. Wow. No one sits you down and says, "Hey, Linnell, you're making over six figures a year. Here's how you protect your even income. at the C-suite." No, sir. Not so if they're all. not talking to people at the C-suite, right? You know they're the not chief, talking to anybody else. Right, the chief. By the way, if you guys don't know what, can you explain to them what the C-suite is? It's, it's a, we call it CXO, right? So anybody who's in a C-suite, chief executive officer, officer, chief operations officer, chief. I call me. Yep. yep. These are all these are all people who are basically at the top of the company and in the boardroom making decisions. Mm-hmm. And they're making decisions for the company. The company I was with was uh, five billion, worth five billion, five billion. Entrusted you with 200 mil. Yes, sir. Quarter yeah. bill. But what they don't do is they don't provide you financial education. They don't provide that. As a matter of fact, neither of us went to college, mm -hmm. right? Well, I got my associate's degree. Right. Right <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did go and I said, you know what? I, I ended up making, because of capital, I started making more money than my college professor. You told me that story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, you told me that story. So you were in school taking entrepreneurship classes, right? Uh, finance. Finance, finance, classes, finance, finance classes, finance classes, and you yeah. told him like, I'm gonna own my own company. Yeah, I'm gonna do my own business. Yeah, I'm gonna do my thing. He's like, <laughs> like, what you here for? I'm gonna do it. And then a year later, you yeah. went back. I started to make more money than him. He goes, I've been an uh, adjunct professor, CPA, certified public accountant for 19 years. You're making more money than me. Congratulations. I said, well, do you want me to drop out of college? He's like, no, I didn't say that. But if the shoe fits. But you know what they're not teaching? Hmm. Financial literacy. They, they're not teaching financial literacy. Even my wife, who's got a finance yeah. degree from the University of Pitt, that finance degree was all about corporate finance to be a CFO type down the road. Corporate finance. Corporate finance, but not, not personal, personal finance. Correct. So they won't tell you. So I'll, I'll, I'll just lay out a couple of the products. That okay. We, so one of the products that we bought is called a universal. Uh, that, 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 that my wife uh, that helped your, you with? That, yeah. that your wife helped us with. Yep is a universal index life insurance policy, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and basically the way this policy works is we pay into it. Um, we're My wife and I are both entrepreneurs. I'm my business, she's her business. Right. If I get sick and money's not coming in, basically I call, I call Sheena. Yeah. She calls the insurance policy, I get paid. Wow. See, right? that, that's it, that's it. And that's not it. Okay. I have a one-year-old. Mm. So if something legend. happens to me, legend, yeah. yeah. If Great something name. happens to me, basically, like if, if, if for some reason I decease, yeah. my wife has nothing to worry about. Yeah. Because then she can go cash in that, that policy. Right. Right. Still maintain a lifestyle and, and for legend, he can still create a, a little bit. This. <laughs> this is even better. Guess okay. what? It's a tax write off. <laughs> <laughs> and the money she receives is tax free. Exactly. Yeah, no tax on that money. So so we got so, so there's financial vehicles that you've put your money into mm -hmm. that you were uh, even unaware at the C-suite of a five billion dollar company, but you're making great money uh, in charge of a quarter bill, but they still were yet not educating you about money. No, no, sir. So the, I mean, basically, the answer for them is 401k. That's it. Yeah. And, and let that's me tell you, yep. let me tell you about the 401k. And this is nuts because when your wife and I were on the phone with with uh, 
my 401k policy holders. Okay. When they went to go cash them in, the fees were nuts. The transaction fees? Wow. Nuts. Wow. Now, and I expected it because I'm financially literate, which is one of the reasons I was yeah. moving it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in reading the book by Tony Robbins, he called this out. You That's know, right. hey, your 401ks are loaded with fees. Right. They're making other people lots of money. Are you talking about uh, money mastering the game book? That's the big, right. The big That's uh, right. gold yeah, one? The big gold. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Mm -hmm. Good book, by the way. You got and Unshakable, by the way. And Unshakable, yeah. And Unshakable, both great you know books. You know what's crazy about that, side note, is that... That's the first ever book he's ever written about. His whole entire career about personal development, right? First time he's ever written a book about money. And it's phenomenal. Right? Phenomenal. And 80, 90% yeah. of what he talked about in that book, we do at PHP Agency, which is which is kind of crazy. So we have a way to execute what people are reading. Here's the funny thing. The, the book is what? 40 bucks? 50 bucks? <laughs> Maybe 20, 25. Is pa it, yeah. Paperback, you know, $20. I'll get yeah. the hard cover. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. Yeah, because yeah, I got it all ear, yeah. earmarked and stuff. Yeah. But best investment ever. Wow. Best investment of time because that financial literacy. Then, yeah. when I'm in conversation with you all, I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do that. That makes sense. It's awesome. So, by the way, if you guys listen, I want to give you guys a gift. If you guys are watching this video, and we're gonna count the one who shares it the most, but if you share this video, this book that he's talking about, I want to send it to you. My gift. I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you via Amazon. Uh, we're just going to ask for your address. We'll send it to your address from, from have my assistant uh, 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 go on Amazon, get you a book. But if you want to really invest in you, get that book. Phenomenal right? book. Phenomenal. Cool. Yep. So, all right. Well, let's let's talk about some solutions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Start some solutions because people yep. say, man, uh, I want to get rich, but I don't want to be a jerk. I want to be a good person. I want to help mm -hmm. other people. And by the way, we had, we had to pick a shaded location so we can see this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's what? Be what beautiful homes. I am beautiful homes here, man. Yeah. Look, by the way, these beautiful homes, they have a couple brothers sitting in a uh, drop top. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, rare. <laughs> it, it's happened, right? Hector hey. Del Toro. It's happened to be quite a few times in this neighborhood. Hey, it would happen faster if you went to Buick Regal. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but in this neighborhood, <laughs> it was much faster. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So, what are some solutions then uh, that you've been able to get predictable results? To, to get you, you know, into a higher income level, to higher, you know, having a radio show, if you were to boil it down to one or two things. First one, mentorship. So I was able to rub shoulders with people who were millionaires. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing a lot of talking, I did a lot of listening and a lot of asking questions. Yeah. And so I'm gonna tell you, if you're ever in the company of someone who you know is really a baller, right? Because a lot of people, they, they call themselves ballers. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. They might drive a nice car and have a nice house but they're not really balling. Yeah. You know when somebody's really balling. And often, you can't spot them right away. Yeah. Sometimes they downplay it. Mm -hmm. But when I get in conversations with people like that, the first thing I go for is mentorship, man. Like, teach me. I wanna learn as much as I can about what you've done yeah. to master the game that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And that, for me, was, was the first piece right there. I remember a consultant when I was in corporate America. He was an independent consultant. He owned his own company. And one day, he walked in, and he was like, yes. yes. And I'm like, well, what are you happy about? He was like, man, I just, this is back when Yahoo was doing well. Yeah. He's like, I just cashed in on some Yahoo stock and options. Nice. Was, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, show me. Yeah. I want to know what you just did, yeah. right? And I end up learning about options. Later that year, I, I spent $5,000 on a course to learn about how to trade options. And by the end of that year, I had created 30 grand of my own money wow. trading options, right? Wow. Where did I get it from? Mentorship, asking yep. questions and yep. getting curious, being curious. And you know, uh, yesterday it was official that Apple is the first trillion dollar. One trillion. <laughs> hey, that's stupid. That's, that's a lot of money. How a much money is that a day? It's, listen, man, if if, uh, if uh, you were around when Jesus was born, right? And you had a, and the three kings gave you a million dollars to spend every day till now, do you know how much money you would have spent? That's not a trillion. That's not a trillion. It's I mean, not a trillion. Yeah. Seven hundred. That's under. Seven hundred ninety billion. Yeah. Only. Yeah. You're still short. Since the day Jesus was born, a million, a million, million dollars million, a day. When people think about a trillion dollars, they, they, they hear his number just kick being kicked around, kicked around, kicked around. Massive that's amount a, of that's money. That's a massive amount yeah. of money made, by the way, from a vision. That's right. Someone who had a vision. Yeah. Which which nobody had computers back then. Yeah. Let alone under let alone under desk. Computers would take up rooms. Yep. Not you know a footprint on your desk. So Vision. so so mentorship. Mentorship. That's one. Right. Yep. And then what about uh, you? I, I would I would say in addition to mentorship, having a blueprint. Right. Having a system. Yeah. A predictable system that yeah. somebody's following because sometimes people think that you need to be talented to be rich. Oh, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Yeah. You yeah. don't need to be talented. Yeah. You don't have to come from a pedigree. You don't have to have a wealthy family. But if you have a predictable system 
of success, a system stands for save yourself time, energy, and money. Right. You, so you've thought about this. <laughs> you, you've taught this before. <laughs> That's a, see when you're messing with another teacher. I'm like, you ain't freestyling, bro. <laughs> It's in a blog post somewhere, man. And that's why, you guys, you got to be, you know, you got to flock with birds of like feather. People yeah. that want to know more, do more. Yeah, no doubt. And willing to to be more. Identity that's, that you deserve to be wealthy. You deserve, your family deserve. You, you know, we asked in a seminar one time, was what did, the, what did your parents tell you about how to get wealthy, how to get rich? You know, somebody said, uh, be a foreman, join the unions, get a job. Get a job, yeah. And, and some yeah. ladies even said, I was told to marry a rich man. That's how you get wealthy. That's a good one. Yeah, that was a great Unless you're a guy. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, these days, you know, you brought... <laughs> true, we true. have the all-inclusive, all-inclusive. That, that's true. That's true. That's true. I know you you and I... Well, we got to give them three. Yeah. We got to give them three. Yeah, one more? Two, okay, one, one, more. One, one, one more. Two more. One, one for me, one for you. One okay. More. So, another another uh, solution. I would say... I got to move the definition of space where there's yeah, yeah. internet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would say the ability to set goals. The ability to set goals. Nice. We got mentorship. Okay. And then you said blueprint. a system, a, yep. bl a blueprint, yep. and then understanding the science of goal setting. When I really applied myself to understanding the science of goal setting, yeah, that took everything to the next level for me. Do you did you think initially when you're starting set goals? I, I think I did. It was it was initially weird for me, mm -hmm. but were goals kind of intimidating for you? Like, man, what if I hit it? What if I don't? I was, I was afraid to set a goal that would have me fail. So you, you, what happens is you play safe. Yeah. And, and you don't you don't create big audacious goals. Yeah. And so as a result, you don't really make any progress. Yep. Like little baby steps. So you'd rather set goals that are high that may be somewhat unreachable, unattainable, versus hitting too low and you hit. Absolutely. Like <laughs> even this year for my revenue goal, yeah. in July, my coach and I, we sat down and we were kind of walking through my goals. Like, well, how you doing with your revenue goal? Uh, I'm not doing good. Mm -hmm. But here's the cool, cool thing. I declare it as a breakdown in my goals, and then I get committed to brand new action. Because I got six months, Yeah. right? Yeah. I got six months to play a brand new game. Yep. And so I think it's really understanding the science of goal setting is another reason why many people, they're, they're, they're not wealthy because they, they get distracted by the wrong things yeah. and they focus on the wrong thing. I love it, man. Yeah. I love it. So what's your last one? My last tip would be you, what you and I are doing right now is finding uh, an association. There's nothing like running with people who want to run to as well. Man, that's huge. Right? And knowing knowing when to let people go. Uh, yeah, right. So exactly. who to run with mm -hmm. and who to run away from. <laughs> <laughs> Either way you're running. Because yeah. it's, it's like, yeah. you know, it's like a, a gym buddy. He's like, hey, man, let's get to the gym. He's like, yeah, let's get to the gym. Versus somebody you got to drag off the couch. You know, there's a proverb out there that says, you know, uh, uh, one can set flight to 1,000, but two, two can set flight ten to 10,000. 10, 10, so that's an exponential. That's a 10x type of math. It's just not like, it's not one plus one. It's a, it's a, it's a multiplier. Who to run with. That yeah. is, yeah. that's good. Right? That's good. You know? That's freestyling, right? Those four are freestyling. <laughs> so entrepreneurship. Yep. A blueprint. system, yep. A system and a blueprint. Yep. Goal setting. Science goal setting. Goal science of goal setting, and knowing who to run with. Yes. Sir. And guys, if uh, if you want to incorporate those four things in your life, well, you're watching the right Facebook live stream. And uh, compared to uh, you know, squirrels uh, uh, ski boarding and uh, people getting into fights, <laughs> distractions. And, right. Uh, we may not get millions and millions of views based on that, but we are here about value. We're here about engagement. But the goal, the goal getters are here. The go getters are right here. The go getters are here. That's it. The goal setters are here. The people who want to be wealthy are here. And big shout out to my Marines. I'm wearing red because it's Red Friday. Remember everyone deployed. And mm. I remember now when I, uh, I was washing a coffee pot and shattered in my hand. Mm. And I went to the emergency room and they were going to stitch it up. And anyway, I, I ran into, of all emergency rooms, of all doctors, places I was supposed to uh, get stitched up. Uh, the secretary, the, the medical secretary that was checking me in was one of the wives of my crew chiefs that got deployed to Iraq. Wow. Yeah. And so she goes, man, did you hear? I says, no, I didn't hear. She says, you know, you know, three of our crew chiefs, you know, three of our air, the aircraft got shot down. Um, three of your crew chief and your door gunners got killed. Tammy Duckworth lost her legs and she's fighting for her life at Walter Reed Hospital. Wow. And uh, I felt a, an overwhelming amount of guilt that I wasn't playing 100% with my business. These guys are fighting for our freedom, mm. fighting for our opportunity to evoke entrepreneurship in our lives. And I was, it was as I was telling myself, am I really applying myself because these guys are losing their lives? They're all in. And they're all in. They're, you know, they're, they're are we all in? Yep. That's a phenomenal question. That's it. Wow. And so that's why I wear red on Fridays because it's red Friday. It's, it's, it's not my thing. It's, it's a, mili in a military community. 
everybody wears red on Fridays. And my car, I got a red seatbelt. <laughs> We're wearing red on Fridays. And uh, hey guys, thanks for tuning red, in. Yeah, nice red songs. Yeah. yeah, he's got some red red piping. He's got get red in the back. Yep. But uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. That's a Sierra Sherrod. She's running an office in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Appreciate she says appreciate the value of the nuggets. Um, Leonard Morton, he goes, I need help. <laughs> out there in uh, Virginia. Okay. Danny Banks, what's going on, brother? Positive Association, BB Sierra, hello. Oh, yeah, I want okay. my own business. Well, Leonard, good. what's up, brother? That's a friend of mine, yeah. We'll make sure you, yeah, exactly. Joe Molina, out of Las Vegas. Much love and respect. Money smart guy from Las Vegas. See, Vegas nice. wasn't built on winners, man. No, it wasn't. Right? But we're going to be in Vegas. This, yeah. We're going to be in Was Vegas here. Next week? Is that next week? Uh, yeah, we about, got 12 day, about 12 days. Today's the second, right? Yeah, or the third. 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 Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so 11 days. 11 days. We're going to be in Las Vegas kicking off the php builders land annual convention it's gonna be a phenomenal event over six thousand people are attending and uh are, are you are you excited to see our, our guest speaker on I am. wednesday night i am kevin hart kevin hart are you excited to see him man? i'm excited Live man. And in person i'm excited yep your brother's coming out too my brother's coming out with me so quentin coming out there if quentin Q. are you watching this Q. yeah appreciate you man another entrepreneur that's right. Another entrepreneur. See, yeah, entrepreneur. He's blood. out entrepreneur right now. He's an entrepreneur right now. <laughs> yeah. what, what, what is your tell everybody what your brother does as an entrepreneur? So my brother, he is uh, he has a company called Athletes Arise, and he works with autistic children, man, to help to help them push to the next level. And he's done phenomenal work. I've seen some of the things he does: athletic yeah. work, mental development. Yeah. But I've seen a kid that couldn't jump rope that wow. he's working with, and then when he's done with him, the kid is, I mean, doing yeah. it like a boxer. <laughs> so he's he's phenomenal. If you if you know anyone who has autism, yep. uh, and they need development, my brother is the guy. He is. That's awesome. That's, that's his gift. He's really good at it. it. Yep. Appreciate you uh, rolling around with me in the Mercedes no Miglia. Doubt, Miglia Miglia. Yeah. This is uh, Lil Harris. We're gonna be uh, in Vegas in the next uh, eleven days. His show is on every Sunday morning, seven a.m. WVON, sixteen ninety a.m. So, appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I apologize for the internet connection. Stops here, stops there. But uh, for those of you who are watching this on replay, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe and you click notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. And if you're watching this on, on Facebook and we showed you some value, I hope I earned, we earned another like because we're sharing this on his page That's too right. as well. We hope we earned a like from you guys to follow our Facebook page. And uh, on behalf of Lanel, this is your mighty smart guy from the Mila Miglia. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to look smart and be money smart today. Nice.